Irish guy and this, this is the smartest video you will ever watch. I forget those science videos trying to study the moon or understand how many hamsters live on Mars. No, this. This will actually educate you. Because the big summer transport is coming up, right? And most of you will be looking at the new 50 million pound recruits. And now, I'm sorry. Let's instead look at the bargain. I'm gonna pick one player out of contract this summer who each Premier League club should sign. All right, let's go. Arsenal, Luis Suarez. Arsenal, finally, this is your chance. Finally, you get the chance to sign Luis Suarez for real. I mean, it's a bit underwhelming this one, isn't it? Suggesting that you sign a footballer you tried to get in 2013. I mean, it's like finally Santa Claus agreeing to get that seven-year-old girl a Pokemon jigsaw puzzle nine years later. You know, when she's 15 and getting off of footballers from Sunderland behind the bins in Tesco. Yeah, I don't really think they're gonna want to spend seven hours putting together a picture of Bulbasaur when they're facing the perils of acne, hormones, and teenage pregnancy. Honestly, Arsenal bid 40 million plus one pound for Suarez when he was 26. He's now five years off 40 and stinking of early menopause. But I don't care. Luis Suarez is still one of the greatest footballers to ever exist. I mean, the narrative might be that he's washed up and finished, right? No. I mean, Diego Simeone has featured him in every single league game this season, bar one, which he was suspended for. I mean, this guy has still got 13 goals this season. I mean, he's not exactly waddling about with a broken back. I mean, doctors haven't exactly told him that he needs to start pissing blood into a bag attached to his hip. Oh, but Suarez is a bad boy. A human I'm sorry, but Luis Suarez hasn't actually bitten another human being in 2,842 days. Well, I mean, th th that we know of. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, he could be chewing the shoulders of grannies down his local B&Q. But on the football pitch, no, the penny dropped with him in 2014. He hasn't bit anyone since Ricky Lambert was at the World Cup. I mean, it, it's been a while. And Luis Suarez, a little more joint adventure post-Barcelona, is mirroring that of David Villas and... Oh yeah, Arsenal tried to sign him back then too. So, th this just makes sense. Let Lacazette leave. Bring in a marquee number nine. But crucially, have Suarez be that experienced impact player off the bench. I mean, this man brings a winning mentality. And that would blend nicely with the Arsenal children. And yes, there is a risk that they might develop his nasty habits too. I mean, we could now see Emile Smith-Rowe going from filming free kicks with chunks to now kicking toddlers in the teeth. But honestly, Suarez could be to Arsenal what Edison Gavani has been to Manchester United. I think it's worth bringing in a seasoned winner, right? And especially when he's going to cost less than a Twix. By the way, to all of you who found this channel from the previous football channel I did, you're all absolute legends. A bunch of Sherlock Holmes. I didn't think anyone would find me over here. But anyway, listen, let's not stop there. Next goal is to hit 150,000 subscribers, all right? If you're new here and you like the content and want to see football origins as well, then slap that big fat red button in the teeth, you absolute legends. Anyway, back into the video. As the Villa Christian Eriksen. Listen, I realize Philip Coutinho is a nice little temporary fling for Aston Villa. But uh, listen to me, you do not want to go broke. You might think paying 33 million pounds for him is a bargain, right? But no, 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 no. At least when you bought Emi Bondia for big money from Norwich, he was 24. I mean, Coutinho turns 30 years old in June. The day Aston Villa agreed to pay over 30 million pounds for a man in his 30s without European football to fall back on? I'm sorry, does that not sound like Leeds United 2002? Coutinho earns 480,000 pounds a week at Barcelona. I mean, he will look at Danny Ings pocketing 120k a week and oh boy, he will be demanding at least 200,000 pounds every week. I mean, sorry Villa executives, do you want to start eating cereal out of the sink? Do you want to be paying Tyrone Ming's mum to wash the bibs and corner flags? If you're going to invest in a 30 year old playmaker, then good Christ, just offer Christian Eriksen a three year deal. Give him a comfy wage of 90,000 pounds a week and I promise you, he will have the same impact as Coutinho. And let's be real, he's gonna have half the ego. I mean, this is a man who came back from the dead. He's football's answer to Jon Snow or Gandalf the Grey. Do you really think he's the type who now is suddenly gonna be spitting at the lunch lady for forgetting to put gravy on his meatloaf? No, he seems like a lovely guy who cherishes every moment. But Coutinho, oh forget the smiles, he is a pampered Barca and Bayern little prince who's mates with Neymar. You just know he looks at the rest of us non-multi-millionaires as if we've got leprosy on our face. Brentford, Fabian Schaar. Yeah, this, this is ambitious. If there'd be no takeover, then yeah, the Geordies would be camping on Fabian Schaar's lawn and begging him to stay. But now it's all just a bit meh. They know they can do better. Listen, Shark could probably get himself a more exciting move abroad. So this might be unrealistic, but you know what, Brentford? Start acting like a big club. You're in the Premier 
Premier League. You could offer him guaranteed first team football. Good Christ, make him the highest paid player at your club. Give him a fat wage of £65,000 a week. Even toss him the captain's armband. And free tickets to a corrupt FM gig. Anything. This is an ambitious ball playing, free kick taking, modern day centre half who can score from 30 yards. Stick him in your back three instead of Ethan Pinnock and honestly, he would fit you like a glove. Brighton, Ben Brereton, Diaz. Brighton's goal scoring ability is a wet joke. You've scored less goals than Watford. Yes. Watford. I know Brent Barrett and Diaz is coming back from the nasty injury at Blackburn, but still, he's a 22-year-old Chile international. I mean, he spent seven years on the books of Manchester United, back when they were good, and he scored 20 goals a season for Blackburn. Now yeah, he could be another Neil Maupin. You know, a 20 goal a season hotshot in the championship, but a mostly frustrating flower pot in the Premier League, but still, on a free transfer, it's worth a punt. And think how many Brighton shirts you're gonna sell in Chile. I mean, come on, it's a no-brainer, surely. Burnley, Florian Grilich. Again, this is ambitious, but I'm sorry. Bernie managed to go out there and buy Maxwell Cornet and Wout Wakehorst. So clearly Sean Dice has grown bored of shopping at sweaty Brits are us. He's tired of his starting 11 looking like a footballing calendar for Brexit. I mean, James Tarkovsky is clearly going to leave Bernie in the summer. I mean, the guy looks like he'd sooner bite off his sister's buddy bud and then sign a new Turf Moor deal. So yeah, go and replace him. And not with another tall centre back from Swindon or Cork. No, think outside the box this time. And go and get Florian Greenwich. A versus Tile centre back who can play midfield too, and he's out of contract with Hoffenheim this summer. He's 26, got 30 Austrian caps, and Ozzy reminds me of the modern day Paul Scharner. You know that versatile midfield pest who made his name for Wigan and West Brom? Greenwich could have a similar impact, so yeah, go and snap him up. Chelsea, Alessio Romagnoli. Okay, listen, you're probably all expecting a media favourite pick like Frank Kessie from AC Milan or Usman Dembele from Barcelona, right? No, be sensible here. Chelsea are losing two centre backs in the summer for less than the price of a strawberry milkshake. Alessio Romagnoli is a 27 year old Italian centre back, and I mean, come on, pairing two former AC Milan captains in defence. It's not a bad look now, is it? I mean, I know he gets ignored by Roberto Mancini for Italy, but Chelsea apparently had a 35 million pound bid rejected by AC Milan for this guy six years ago when he was 21. I mean, apparently he wasn't for sale at any price. Well, um, he's now costing less than the packet of hula hoops. So it makes sense. You're losing two, maybe even three defenders for free. So just go and sign one for free. I mean, if I was Chelsea, I'd also bring Fakeo Tomori back as well. And then suddenly, a complete back three filled with former AC Milan centre backs. Ah, uh, yes please. I mean, that'd be like PSG signing Dembele and then having a front three of former Barcelona forwards. Oh, it just sounds tasty. Crystal Palace, Jesse Lingard. Things are not going well for Jesse Lingard right now. Good Christ, he barely gets to the Man United first team. He's out of the England squad and he just spent last weekend vomiting on the bench. Yes, actual vomiting. I mean, what did he do? Wolf down a pink chicken half an hour before the match? Did his bench buddies show him a photo of Craig Shakespeare in the shower? He needs a move this summer. Go to Crystal Palace. I mean, why, why not? It's a club who have already given you your best moment of football. When you scored the winner in the FA Cup final, they play an exciting brand of football under Patrick Vieira. I mean, stick this guy in an attack with ballers like Wilfred Zaha, Eberecki Edzi, and Michael O'Lease. I'm sorry, it's like being dumped into the gameplay of FIFA Street. I mean, right now, Crystal Palace are the Premier League's answer to a five-a-side team. The silky first touches, the back heels. They look easier on the eye than Manchester United. Honestly, Palace, save the 50 million pounds you'd have to pay Chelsea for Conor Gallagher. And instead, just snap Lingard up in a free. Because here's a secret that will make some people feel like smacking me in the face with a golf club. Mostly Chelsea fans. All right, whisper it quietly, but Jesse Lingard is a better player than Conor Gallagher. You're probably all bleeding from the eyes right now, right? But lads, I'm not saying that Jesse J is musically more talented than Noel Gallagher. No, it's just Lingard is. Everton Andre Bellotti. Here's a spoiler. Dominic Cavalloon is the next Jay Rodriguez. Ah, uh, now we just have to wait for Gareth Southgate to realise that. I mean, Rodriguez burst onto the scene with a 17-goal season for Southampton in 2013. He was buzzing around the England squad and then smashed his knee into wet marmalade and hasn't been the same since. Similarly, Cavalloon is another two-season wonder who now likes to wear a dress and hold Chanel handbags. I mean, it's a brave choice to dress up like Kendall Jenner when on the pitch you're now stumbling about like a blind cow. But go get Andre Bellotti, the 28-year-old Italian centre forward with 103 Serie A goals. I mean, he's a Euro 2020 winning goal machine. Honestly, give Torino Moaz Keane as a peace offering to dry their tears, but honestly, a big burly goal machine like Velotti. I mean, it's stupid if Everton don't sign him on a free. Leeds, Henrik Mkhitaryan. Uh, typically Leeds to sign a former Manchester United 
flop. Ah, uh, Fernandes fans, it's probably like me suggesting that you breastfeed your cat. But hear me out on this one. For one thing, you've already got one Man United reject on the right wing, so swallow your pride. Let's not act like Daniel James doesn't exist. And second, let's be real, Rafinha is leaving you for Barcelona in a £50 million pound deal. I mean, come on. Do you really think his agent, Deco, is happy for his client to remain in Yorkshire when he could be at the new cap? So go on, sell him and use the money to then invest in a top quality centre forward. Because let's be honest, relying on Patrick Bamford to play football is like relying on a chimpanzee to fly an airplane. And then, replace Rafinha with Henrik Mkhitaryan. I know he turns 34, but he can do a short-term job. I mean, he's got four goals and seven assists for Roma this season. I mean, he's forced Jose Mourinho to change his mind on him. But go on, offer him one final crack at the Premier League. A division where he's got unfinished business. I mean, he's got pace and delivery. Stick him in this manic Leeds team, and he will succeed. Leicester James Rakowski. Leicester City's collection of defenders right now is a complete and utter mess. On paper, Wesley Lafana and Johnny Evans is a reliable partnership, yes. But Evans turns 35 in January, and after 500 games of professional football, clearly his limbs are weaker than Will Smith's self-control. I mean, Leicester were once quoted £50 million pounds for James Tarkovsky. So imagine the last lap Brendan Rodgers is going to have this summer, when he gets to pluck him out of Turf Moor, for free. Ah, uh, it's a bit like a home wrecker who finally gets her man. Honestly, Rogers might as well kiss him in the Burnley car park while Sean Dyche watches from the window, sobbing into his curtains. Liverpool killing Mbappe. Okay, I realise it's unrealistic to break up the killing Mbappe and Real Madrid romance, right? But why not at least try? I mean, this is gonna sound borderline mental, but if I was Liverpool, I would push Mo Salah's agent into a bin. I mean, refuse him a new half a million week a deal. I mean, Salah is 30 in June. What's not to say he's the next Alexis Sanchez? Instead of lining the pockets with an aging forward, instead just push the boat out and empty your bank balance onto Kylian Mbappe's face. I mean, if Liverpool go out there and win four trophies this season, why can't they convince him to say no to a transitional Real Madrid? I bet like how Chelsea convinced Eden Hazard when they won the Champions League. Is Mbappe saying no to a quadruple winning team? I mean, breaking your weight structure to pay £600,000 a week. It doesn't work when the guy is 30 years old. But for a 23 year old world champion, buying a future Ballon d'Or winner for free? Get him on a six year deal and think of the resale value in three years time. I mean, once you're in Klopp leaves, then sure, give Mbappe his dream move to Spain age 26. But in the meantime, Think of all the trophies you will win with Mbappe. He would be the second coming of Fernando Torres. Three years of world-class goals. For selling him on for what? 200 million pounds? Think of the shirt sales all across the globe. He is the modern day Thierry Henry. I mean, he's probably the most marketable face in the sport right now. 600k a week doesn't seem so nutty right about now. And for next season, a front three of Mbappe, Diaz and Salah in the last year of his contract. I'm no Liverpool fan and even my mouth is filling up with goo. Man City Paul Pogba. Manchester City don't do free transfers. In the same way Paris Hilton doesn't eat dinner down the local soup kitchen. They're too rich, they don't need to. I mean, the last outfield player they got for free was Aaron Moy. Before that was Bakary Sagna, Owen Hargreaves, and Patrick Vieira. Freebies are not in this club's DNA. But let's go on, do it. Go out and get Paul Pogba. If only to infuriate your city neighbours. Stick this man in a winning machine like Man City. And we might just see the Pogba who dominated Italy with Juventus. I mean, come on Pogba. What, you think a switch would affect your Man United legacy? What Man United legacy? In 10 years, Man United fans will remember you the same way they remember Anderson now. Man United fans like Carlos Tevez more than you. I mean, this move could go one of two ways. Either Guardiola would get fed up with the man's laziness, like with Yaya Torre at Man City, or he could be the Yaya Torre who Guardiola won the trouble with at Barcelona. I mean, stick him in the midfield with Kevin De Bruyne. Have him playing the ball forward as he's protected by Rodri, and not some Scott Cole Scott. And trust me, PP could be world class. I mean, honestly, Man City, if someone had told you back in 2015 that you could get a midfield superstar Pogba for free one day, I mean, no brainer, right? Man United and Tony Rudiger, go and make this happen. If Manchester United are serious about winning trophies, then dump Harry Maguire into a smelly weedy bin. I mean, dump him on the porch of someone like, oh, I don't know, Tottenham, and go and get Antonio Rudiger on a free. I mean, he wants six million pounds a season, right? Fine, Maguire earns 10 million a year. It's no problem. 
give Rudiger 300,000 pounds a week and pair him in a back two with Rafa Varane. Suddenly, that is without doubt the best centre back pairing in the league. And don't you tell me it's not probably the best centre back duo in the world. I mean, that, that is unbreakable. It's the modern day Rio and Finnish. Give Varane the captain's armband. And Ozzy, this is such a brilliant opportunity. If you ignore this and choose to persist with Maguire, then it's official. The entire club have brains made of snot. Newcastle Alexander Lacazette. Newcastle need a centre forward that is not Chris Wood. This man can be what Emmanuel Adebayor was in 2009, leaving Arsenal to become a mercenary at big spending Man City who know, just like Newcastle, we're not in the Champions League. I mean, Arsenal are not renewing Lacazette's wages of £180,000 a week, but Newcastle, why not offer him the same wage in a two-year deal? A top-class stopgap as you chase the Europa League. Nice little project for Lacazette before he returns to France, right? Honestly, makes sense to me. Norwich, Kyle Lauren. Okay, if, and a big if, if Norwich somehow survive in the league, go out and bring in Kyle Lauren on a free. I mean, you've already got an American striker, so why not pair him with the centre forward from Canada? He's 26, out of contract at Besiktas, and last season banged in 23 goals in Turkey. I mean, 2021 was the year of his life. He went from being a pretty nothing meatball of a striker to suddenly netting 14 goals in 13 games for Canada. He is the poster boy of Canadian football at the Qatar World Cup. He is a marketing executive's dream in North America. He is a perfect replacement for an agent team of Pookie. If you go out and get him, then suddenly Delia Smith will be able to flog cookbooks in North America. She could do what Leona Lewis never could. Finally crack America! Southampton Matthias Ginter. Yeah, I know Brush and Munch and Gladbach's 28-year-old centre half, Matthias Ginter, is going to have better options on the table than Southampton. Good guys, he's got nearly 50 caps for Germany. But I mean, worth giving him a ring. Tottenham, Nusuar Mazraoui. This could arguably be one of the smartest transfers on the list. I know Matt Doherty's had a resurgence under Antonio Conte, but choke Emerson Royale into a skip and go out there and bring in Nusuar Mazraoui. An exciting, rapidly quick, 24-year-old attacking right wing back for Ajax. Ozzy, you think the English right backs are bitter that they're up against such high competition right now? Well, think of Mazraoui. This guy is a top class player, but PSG superstar Ashraf Hakimi makes his Moroccan alternative look about as attractive as your grandma's hairy chin. But no, Tottenham, this is a 50 million pound goal scoring right wing back available on a free. You'd be stupid not to do this. Watford Sean Longstaff. Doesn't this just seem like something Watford would do? West Ham Paulo Dybala, and this seems like a West Ham one. Again, it's highly unlikely, but you never know. I mean, if West Ham reach the final of the Europa League, then uh, it might convince Paolo Dybala and he'd be one hell of a second striker behind Mikel Antonio, right? I know he lost his way at Juventus for a while, but he's still got 13 goals this season. He's still a good player. And if you think this is unrealistic, um, West Ham, you are a club who once signed Carlos Tevez and Javi Mascherano. You have a knack for signing Argentine superstars who are way out of your league. So, give it a go, why not? Wolves and Guilty Maria. Two words. Jorge Mendes. Get this done. I know Angel Di Maria was a Manchester United flop, but I'm sorry. Are we really gonna take just 32 games from this man's 798 game career and come to the conclusion that he's just not good enough for the Premier League? Yeah, he's 35 next season. But honestly, sell him the Wolves project, give him a two year deal, stick him in one of the number 10 roles, you know, alongside Daniel Podence, surround him with energetic runners like Fabio Silva and Pedro Neto, and I think he's a perfect replacement for Francisco Trancao. I mean, think of how many goals he would create in this team. Nah, convincing his wife to move to Wolverhampton. Just 75 miles from the last house which got robbed. Ah, oh, I'd be like trying to get Seth Rogen to eat a salad. But just think what a monster signing this would be for Wolves. Anyway, so what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below what freebie signing should your club sign in summer. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe. As always, I'll talk to you in a while.